Rwanda mubyeyi wange reka nkwihoreze ndetse nicyo wambyariye nicyo wandereye none ubwo maze gukura ngatora gatege ubwo naciya kenge reka ngukorere nkoreshe ibyiza wampaye maze nkwihoreze nkoreshe ibyiza wampaye maze nkwihoreze imyaka ibaye I coldly invite everybody. I know most of you came from far away. Uh, some came from as far as Canada. You drove almost 18 hours. Some of you flew down here. And uh, some of you came from different, different parts of the United States. You drove all the way to come to this 18 commemoration of genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, which occurred in 1994. Rwandese friends that came from different parts of the world, sympathizers, honorable guests who came here today, we all welcome you. When we have people like you coming here to pat our shoulders, we feel confident. You know, Rwandese, after we went into 1994 genocide, there were no uh, therapists to heal those who, were, who survived the genocide. But your prayers, the monetary offers that many, many, many of you sent down there, the support, visitation made a big difference. And for you coming here also, we thank you very much. As you know, we are in month of April. When I think about the month of April, it's the 12th month in history of humankind. Why do I say that? Among the 12 months, month of April always comes into my mind and I feel terrified and sick. If you reflect your minds back, the fields in Cambodia it was April 17th that Kamarouj killed 1.7 to 2.5 million people in their genocide. It was the same month of April 24th. 1 to 1.5 million people died in genocide. Armenians were slaughtered. The same month of April, April 5th, whereby the siege of Sarajevo and Serbians murdered. About 110 were slaughtered in a genocide form. Had it not been NATO, it could be counted to millions and millions. Reflect back, the Jewish, during the Holocaust, it started in January when Hitler saw that by shooting by bullets, he could just only kill 30,000 in almost. 10 months, he decided to make a big concentration camp and also a big gas chamber so that he can kill as many as he could within a day. And thousand, thousand died. That happened in April 19, that's when those chambers started burning with tears of gases of carbon monoxide and cyanide. Month of April doesn't leave USA alone also. Although there were no genocide in USA, but remember, McVeigh on April 19th. That's when Oklahoma building was struck down. Children were in there. He didn't mind who was in the building. Columbine shooting, April 20th. 
Imagine. Waco, April 19th. Then come down, trickle down to recently. Rwanda genocide, April 6th. Whereby 10,000 people died each day. The whole world watching. Nobody took an action. The whole world chose to look beside until one million of Tutsis died in that country. So to me, the month of April, to me, is so creepy when it comes. However, yesterday, it was a good Friday. That brings a little refreshment. Good Friday also happened in the month of April. But when you reflect back, those who are Christians, we believe that those who perished in the month of April had enough time to put their face together. So let's keep up faith. Let's keep up praying. And let's keep us together, knowing that there is a point whereby those who died in the month of April in vain will be rewarded. I am not a pastor. I won't preach today. Neither am I a priest. I'm just a layman. For that matter, I just want to let you know that month of April, when it comes, we should all reflect our minds back and pray for those who went before us. I'll go ahead and invite each one of you to stand up so that we can have a moment of silence before we start our program. Thank you, Mr. Sidham. Our nation, Rwanda, came from deep deep, 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 deep. But where you know where Rwanda has now reached, as you will hear from the panelists who are here, it's amazing. Had it not been the power of God to give our president, Kagame, enough courage, enough wisdom to put where Rwanda is, we could not be where we are right now. For that matter, everything that one needs to do, we start with a word of prayer. I'm going to invite Reverend Father Jean Baptiste to come up here, Maserati to come here and offer us a benediction. Thank you. Almighty God and the Father, in the words of the prophet Isaiah, you assure us that the mountains may fall or go away, the hills turn to dust or total, but your faithful love will stand as a shelter for all who will call on your name. Today, as we gather to commemorate the genocide against the Tutsi and the slaughter of moderate Hudu, once again we have climbed up here. And stepping over our, over our graves, we hold our grief in your prayers and call on your name. For our beloved ones, parents, family, and friends, that their names be engraved on the palms of your hands, their pain and tears wiped away. Be guided to springs of living water, and their rest in your sight, O oh God, be an endless bliss. Eighteen years ago, Rwanda was doomed to an irreparable fate, and no one would have bet a penny for her sudden recovery. As we look over the years and contemplate how far we've come from, we pause and sigh in gratitude and thanksgiving to you, Lord God of power, for providing Rwanda with a visionary and committed leadership that has brought us from ashes and helped shape a living nation, proud 
and then to write in golden letters for now and next generation a new story of success, thriving and prosperity. A healed, healing nation, reconciled, knowledgeable, and ready to partake and take her share in the commonwealth of humanity. We pray for our president, His Excellency Paul Kagame, and his team. May their commitment to service gain them overflowing blessings and their dedication to nation building be crowned with success. As we join together as a nation to learn from history in a bit to build a brighter future, we measure the distance between suffering, grieving, and taking on life again. Let us pray that the light of this resurrection break through the walls of our mind and the hearts so that those still jailed by the loss of their beloved ones hold on faith and hope and know that the souls of our beloved ones and the hands of God when no torment shall ever touch them. And those especially among survivors of the genocide whose lives is a daily trauma, we pray that God opens for them a jar of blessings and consolation so that they may be again able to appreciate the enjoyments of living. For Rwandans as a nation, as we strive to bridge up the gaps of our ethnic divide and reach out to one another, may the good Lord heal our past, cast out those who still seed hatred, and set us on a path whereby we seek together social harmony and instill development. May our healed past be a light of benediction on our present. The present be a radiant searchlight on our future, and the future be a beautiful heaven of work and rest. For all of you friends of Rwanda here present, and all those in North America whose destiny is seamlessly bound to ours, I pray that the Lord gives you a hundredfold back for your support. In the words of the psalmist, may Yahweh your guardians not fall asleep. May he be your shed, your right hand. May Yahweh save your foot from stumbling and guard your life from all harm. May Yahweh guard your comings and goings, henceforth and forever. Amen. His Excellency, Engineer James Kimonyo, Ambassador of Rwanda to the United States. Honorable friends of Rwanda, distinguished guests, fellow compatriots, fellow survivors, ladies and gentlemen, Good afternoon. I'm blessed and deeply humbled to be here today. On behalf of the Rwandan community in North America, in partnership with the Embassy of Rwanda in Washington, D.C., I would like to thank you for joining us for the 18th commemoration of the genocide against Tutsi that claimed more than one million lives in 100 days. This last genocide of the 20th century was sponsored, planned, executed by the then extremist Hutu government of Rwanda. April 7 marks the International Day of Remembrance of and Reflection on the Genocide Against Tutsi in Rwanda as declared by the United Nations and the international community on December 23rd, 2003. Allow me to acknowledge that some of you came as far as Africa and Europe, and many of you drove for long hours from different corners of Canada and the United States to be here, to observe the minute of silence with us, to be in solidarity with the people of Rwanda as we remember and honor the victims of the genocide against Tutsi and we affirm our commitment to the promise of never again. Every year on April 7th, Rwanda as a nation mourns the death of her sons and daughters slaughtered by her own. Rwandans and friends of Rwanda, remember the horrific days of our history. 
You remember the shootings, screaming, yelling, that phone call or the email that broke the news about the systematic killings and violations against anyone defined as a Tutsi or the ally of Tutsi in Rwanda. About the death of our family members, our friends, our acquaintances and strangers. For survivors, we we'll revisit that time when we realized that our fate was at the hands of the extremist Hutu, when we had to be separated from our families to save our lives. We remember our parents' and siblings' faces. We recall the tragic death the victims endured, and hear their final words. At this time, on April 7th in 1994, some of our people were already killed. Some of us were hiding. Some of us were agonizing. But most of us were still oblivious of the tragedy that was unfolding all over the land of Thousand Hills. As the media was framing the genocide against Tutsi as a barbaric tribal war, the international community stood still and watched the hills of Thousand Hills sunk underneath the river of Tutsi and the allies of Tutsi blood. No one but a handful of brave, ordinary people stood up for us, sacrificing their own lives, armed with nothing more than a desire to do what's right, to protect those of us in need. Join us today and every day to pay tribute to those heroes of our time. Let's recognize the bravery of the Rwandan Patriotic Front and all the people who individually or collectively, through small or big actions, stopped the genocide and saved our lives. We are blessed to have, of, to have some of these heroes in this room with us. And we want to take this opportunity to thank them. Please know that we will always be. Please don't clap. I do apologize. Let's keep the morning uh, mood. No clapping is allowed. I would appreciate. But in our heart, we want to acknowledge these heroes of our time. Like I said, we need you to know that we will be indebted to you forever and we will live to honor the legacy of those whose lives were lost for us to survive. This commemoration weekend will be a unique opportunity to learn from survivors and many experts, some of whom I'm proud to call friends of Rwanda how we can apply the lessons from Rwanda to build a bright future. My fellow survivors and Rwandans in this room mirror the progress we have made in rebuilding our lives from the ashes of the genocide and exemplify the resilience of the people of Rwanda. More than ever before, we are a cohesive community thriving to defend the future of our nation. Whether we are in uniform or not, stationed in Haiti, Liberia, or Darfur, or simply walking the streets of Washington, D.C., we are aware that the future of Rwanda is in our hands and understand the role we can play to build a more peaceful world for all. We are now at the, 80th, uh, at the eighth stage of the genocide, faced with an increasing movement of genocide deniers who are determined to destroy any evidence of the genocide with intent to write our history. For survivors, the genocide denier is a monster with many heads eager to destroy our identity 
in the memory of our people. We hope that by the end of this commemoration, we will understand better why more than 6,000 survivors signed the petition against the NATO's Foundation Human Rights Prize to Paul Rusesabagina, an imposter, Hotel in Rwanda Hollywood made hero, and an advocate of double genocide in Rwanda. At the time when trauma is at its highest peak, it is important to understand the impact of genocide denial on survivors' recovery, from our personal healing to reconciliation and the pursuit of justice. This will help us to curtail the still growing consequences of the genocide. The cases of Beatrice Munyenyezi, Leopold Munyakazi, Lewo Mujesera, to name a few alleged perpetrators who for a long time lived peacefully in our neighborhood should be a warning to everybody of the danger that surrounds us and should help us to understand the need for all of us to get involved in this cause. The United Nations and the international community has recognized the failure to, to prevent or stop the genocide against Tutsi and have tried to amend the lack, their lack of action. However, there is still a need for collective and concrete actions to support survivors and their recovery. We want you to know that we count our blessing in knowing that we are now more united than we were 18 years ago. As we remember the darkest of the modern history and renew our commitment to fight the genocide throughout the world. Let us all make it resound for years to come. I thank you.